Hello, uh, welcome to my talk, Solving the Number Resolution Problem in the RF Physical Layer, with that a very important, partly parenthetical. My name is Greg Dargan, I'm from Georgia Tech, and uh, I'd like to talk about how this problem can be solved with the physical layer. <clears throat> and so what is the number resolution problem? And th this comes from uh, last year's RFID conference, where uh, Chris Diario came up with this doomsday scenario, a 70 mile per hour trailer full of RFID tagged garments and separately tagged pallets passes under a Gen 2 highway toll gantry. In this example, you've got uh, maybe an RFID <coughs> rain toll tag, uh, rain tagged garments, and then a separate logistics uh, RFID UHF tags on the pallets that contain the garments. This is just a, a fun example that illustrates um, something that we probably wouldn't have th thought we'd have seen 10 years ago, and that is lots of different tags densely populating the same environment, but those tags are from different vendors. And we need to figure out how what are all the, the tags representing, and then uh, where on the web can we find the digital twin associated with that tag? That is the digital representation uh, on the web that describes what the object is that's being tagged. So we separate that into two different problems and the physical layer really helps with one of those problems. One is we need to read a field of multiple tags quickly if we want to have any hope of getting this information out. And this is where the physical layer RF techniques can help improve current practice. And then problem two, which uh, uh, will is the, the talk of many of the other um, uh, presentations in this session, we need a way to privately associate RFID tag reads with a digital twin of the tagged object on the crowd, cloud. And of course, this has to be done with privacy in mind with all of the myriad of vendor uh, tagging conventions that exists out there um, in a crowded field of multiple vendor tags. So let's talk about how the physical layer can help out. I can do so a lot with problem number one. <clears throat> and I've outlined a few techniques that I'm gonna talk about today um, that, uh, that help with this. So one technique involving subspace methods is a very uh, effective way to read a complex tag environment because it allows you to read collided tags that are responding at the same time. And it's based on this unique property of backscatter where the reader is actually supplying the um, oscillator, the RF oscillator, to illuminate a fear field of tags, and so it has an exact copy of that transmitted tag oscillator that it uses to decode the incoming RF waveform that gets scattered back from all the tags. Now, if you look at the diagram here, <coughs> what you see is a constellation diagram. So every tag, like this blue line here from tag number one, produces a signal constellation, which has one point there and one point there. Now, if there's another tag present, what you'll actually see approximately is four constellation points. Basically, two binary tag scattering uh, gives you four different combinations. So you trace out sort of like a uh, parallelogram in a quadrature in phase diagram. If you have another tag, that's another set of binary points. So multiply that by two, that's eight possible points. And the signal will kind of bounce around these eight points. Now, if these were independent transmitters, in other words, if this was binary phase shift keying done by a bunch of independent Bluetooth transmitters or some conventional wireless scheme like that. This would be a real mess to pull apart 
in the time and frequency domain because those oscillators are independent of one another and over time the phases spin around uh, and so this would be sort of a jumbled time varying mess however in a static environment when the tags are red we get static uh, combinations of their backscatter digital waveforms. So with some clever algorithm uh, management, you can actually pull apart these three tags given this uh, configuration of scattering. The one real problem that this suffers with, and this causes a lot of problem in RFID, is this idea of the near-far problem. RFID tags have a tremendous amount of dynamic range when they backscatter. Losin tags look really, really powerful compared to tags on the fringe of coverage. That's partly due to the radar link budget behavior, this 1 over R to the fourth behavior. Um, but this is a promising technique uh, that even some readers have employed nowadays to uh, singulate and separate tags. Another technique is to use custom protocol methods. Even the Gen 2 standard, which it's, with its numerous commands, allows for some custom commands such that readers and especially fabricated tags can have um, protocol level uh, techniques for rapidly acquiring and singulating them. This can be used in combination with a lot of other the physical techniques that we're talking about here. Uh, there's antenna techniques. You can use array-based readers. Uh, there are some products on the market now that do this very thing. And here you're using an array to exclude and even localize uh, a field of tags, reducing the number of tags that will respond to a reader and thereby uh, helping you to simulate them faster and to read and work through a large field of tags quickly. Now, most of the rest of the techniques that I'm going to talk about are uh, phased-based localization techniques. Again, taking advantage of this unique property of backscatter. And some of this work that I've shown here uh, relates to our newly formed Motion Capture and Localization Technical Committee on the Council of RFID and IEEE. Uh, please check out the, web, uh, the website for more information. But the position location info can also add extra information about position to the digital twin that you're referencing. So this is more than just a, a way to work through a big field of tags. It also provides you some information that you may want to store uh, on the cloud with the associated item on the tag. Now, <clears throat> how do you localize tags and use that localization information to uh, work through a field of tags more quickly? Uh, one technique that people developed early on uh, is a phased-based relationship. So here we have another IQ diagram and a tag that's been read, the same tag, in a static environment using stepped frequencies. So you can see uh, the phase is changing as you step across different frequencies. Uh, this particular example comes from Chen Chi's work uh, at 5.8 gigahertz backscatter. Now, the farther the tag is from the reader, the faster that phase will spin around as you step through frequency. Um, early techniques based um, on work by Pavel Nikitin and Josh Griffin show that you could really just even take two points and kind of get a rough estimate of the round trip time from reader to tag back to reader and thus help localize a tag figure out where it is in this environment, using it to spatially filter um, a large field of tags. Uh, in Chung's work, he found that stepping across a number of frequency points while you're interrogating a tag 
uh, gives you a way that's not only very reliable to do this round trip estimation, but can even filter out some of the multipath. In fact, he came up. So in this diagram, what we see is uh, an inversion of those points. For those of you who are familiar with electrical engineering practice, if you have a bunch of measurements in the frequency domain, you can invert that with a Fourier transform and that magically gives you the impulse response. This is basically if I sent a pulse out at my reader and I listened to what returned back, what was scattered back from a tag. These are all of the echoes that I would get. The first arriving component would be the peak here in time. And then there would be some multipath fall off that, from each of these. You'll see over here, this is the corresponding distance that this particular data was measured at. Chung Chi measured this on the campus of Georgia Tech and was actually able to measure the round trip propagation delay for each of these peaks. And the beautiful part about this technique is that you can still filter out the echoes by just keying in on the first or peak arriving component. Um, this worked remarkably well, giving us maybe centimeter scale accuracy in environments that were the real world, not uh, just anechoic chambers. This is a great way to filter out different tags um, and in a complicated field of tags using, using localization. Now, that's taking advantage of phase with the tag there are some interesting reader-based techniques, too, that have largely gone underexplored. Uh, one of my favorite ones is, was done by a Georgia Tech student years ago uh, named Matt Trotter. This is a picture of, from his PhD dissertation. This blue waveform is something we call a power-optimized waveform. It's a bunch of synchronized subcarriers emanating from the same reader with this kind of Gaussian envelope. We found some tags actually respond to this pretty well. We'll actually power up, but you can modulate commands onto this, get information back. Um, but what's interesting is that because now you're not illuminating with the CW waveform, you now have something with some structure to it. And you can actually look at the phase of the return of this backscattered structure uh, at the reader, and again, get time of flight, true time of flight measurements uh, that allow you to make bands of uh, RFID tags in space that uh, can be filtered out spatially. And this allows you to localize a more complicated field of tags. So this is a brief overview of the different techniques that are available to engineers. Uh, there are many more and many more nuances we didn't really cover, uh, but this is really key to getting a faster read rate in a complex field, which will solve the first part of that number resolution problem.